position on these small rocks. I've long voiced out this position since the mid-90s when I first took this up as a member of the Philippine Congress when China seized mischief reef, a feature well within our exclusive economic zone. My position has become more relevant in the light of the ongoing massive reclamation projects of China in the South China Sea, which accelerated last year, 2014. I'm saddened, in fact, I'm shocked when some ask the question, why fight over small rocks in the middle of the ocean when referring to the West Philippine Sea situation now approaching boiling point? To some, Mischief Reef, Scarborough Shoal, Pagasa, and now Ayungin Shoal, etc., etc., are, are small rocks not worth fighting for, fighting over. I don't know if such comments are driven by naivete about geopolitics and warfare, or just dictated by their own plain desire to preserve the status quo, because the status quo for them means, one, peace at all costs in the face of a rising China, or, number two, an ideologically based intestinal interlock with China, or, number three, fear, not wanting to antagonize the dragon for fear of being devoured. In warfare and geopolitics, the potential force of a territory is not necessarily proportionate to the size of the territory. It is the location that determines how much potential and, in the end, kinetic force can be brought to bear from the territory. In other words, how well one can project power, gain access to a bigger objective, or conversely, prevent access or deny access using that piece of territory, however small. We should learn from history. Note how the Pacific War was won using tiny atolls, rocks, islands, with names like Trok, Tulagi, Saipan, Kwajalein Atoll, Tarawa Atoll, etc., etc., dotting the vast Pacific Ocean as shown by the following map. That was the West Pacific area in 1941 to 1944. Now we are looking at a smaller part of the West Pacific, the South China Sea. The South China Sea today is considered by all strategic think tanks as the convergence point of the world's three most powerful economic powers, the US, China, and Japan. Add to that India, Australia, South Korea, and Indonesia, then the minor powers that are now joining the arms race Vietnam and the Philippines. In the periphery, their intentions unclear is Russia. It is without doubt the convergence point of the greatest powers in absolute and relative terms in the history of mankind. Note the strategic location of the Philippines in the South China Sea. Theater. The Philippines is athwart the eastern periphery of the South China Sea. As such, every speck of Philippine territory is strategic in peace and in conflict. China is fanning the flame of conflict with its nine dust line, which only China respects and the rest dismisses as irrational and without legal and historical basis. And the Philippines has assumed center stage with China's brazen grab using raw naked power of its reef in 1995 and Scarborough Shoal in 2012. And now they're positioning to grab other shoals like Ayungin Shoal as well. These territorial claims defy common sense as shown by the following map, those rocks being way within the Philippine exclusive economic zone and so distant from the Chinese mainland. Those who dismiss Scarborough Shoal as just small rocks in the middle of the ocean do not or refuse to appreciate the shoal's strategic importance. It is only around 120 nautical miles from the shores of our province of Zambales and so close to the country's vital economic and military installations. Subic, Clark, Metro Manila, primary airports and seaports, power plants, Calabar Zone, and our Army, Navy, and Air Force bases. <coughs> Scarborough Shoal is not small, including a huge lagoon inside. It has an area of 150 square kilometers, almost the size of Quezon City, the largest city in Metro Manila. With little engineering works, its channel can be widened and deepened to make the lagoon accessible to Navy ships. The lagoon's depth is sufficient for China's destroyers. A country with advanced construction capability and financial muscle can transform this into a naval base. One can easily visualize how many ships can be anchored in the lagoon, almost the size of a large city like Quezon City. Converted into a naval installation, Scarborough Shoal can be used to project power, 
and monitor strategic and tactical communications of the Philippine government, the military bases, including the assets of our treaty ally, the U.S., once the rotational basis access agreement is made operational. Missiles have been installed in Scarborough Show that can reach in just a few minutes targets in Central Luzon, Metro Manila, and Southern Tagalog. Under the control of China and once militarized, Scarborough Shoal could be transformed into an unsinkable aircraft carrier permanently parked in our front yard, well within our exclusive economic zone. If anyone doubts the convertibility of Scarborough Shoal for military purposes, consider this. More than 60 years ago, the U.S. Navy converted a similar atoll around 1,200 miles from the Philippines into a staging area for the invasion of the Philippines. This was the Ulithi Atoll, with features similar to Scarborough, only around four times bigger. Here's Ulithi Atoll. Just some small rocks in the middle of the ocean, but transformed to house part of Admiral House's huge third fleet that was the vanguard in the invasion of Japan-occupied Philippines in 1944. <coughs> this was how Ulithi looked on the eve of the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Note the carriers. Note the carriers and battleships and cruisers and destroyers anchored among those small rocks. In a small way, the same is true in considering the strategic potential of a union and receive reef and what I predict is a power play to have more Chinese military installations in the area to project power and as a counterpoil against future enhanced bases in the Palawan area for use by the armed forces of the Philippines and our treaty ally, and as China's staging area to grab the oil wheats wrecked to bank with its reputed 5 billion barrels of oil and 55 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. So why fight over small rocks? Now we know. Now, the January, <coughs> now you can see this uh, map. It shows a serious security threat. The Mabini Reef, uh, there's an ongoing uh, reclamation there, would be if China succeeds in constructing an airstrip there. From there, China, for example, uh, J-11 fighter can easily cover the entire Philippines with a 1,000 mile operating radius. The J-11 has a range of 2,000 miles. It can cover the entire Philippines, the entire Borneo, almost all of Vietnam and uh, practically the entire South China Sea. And I'd like uh, to add this uh, recent uh, article about the Pyro uh, Cross Reef uh, Reclamation Project, which is considered to be the most major reclamation project in the area. And here's a map of uh, all the ongoing reclamation project, Pyro Cross Reef, Quarteron Reef, Johnson South Reef, Gaben Reef, Johnson uh, North Reef, and here's uh, how it looks like. Uh, China is building an island of at least 3,000 meters long on Fire Cross Reef. That could be the site of its first airstrip in the Sprati Islands in the South China Sea. From uh, James, uh, this is uh, the assessment, satellite image of the island taken on 8 August and 14 November shows that in the past three months, Chinese dredgers have created a landmass that is almost the entire length of the reef. Fire Cross Reef lies to the west of the main Sprati Island archipelago and was previously underwater. The only habitable area was a concrete platform built and maintained by China's People's Liberation Army Navy, or PLAN. The new island is more than 3,000 meters long and between 200 and 300 meters wide, large enough to construct a runway and apron. The dredgers are also creating a harbor to the east of the reef that would appear to be large enough to receive tankers and major surface combatants. The land reclamation project of Fire Cross is the fourth such project undertaken by China in the Sprati Islands in the last 12 to 18 months and by far the largest in scope. China has built new islands at Johnson South Reef, Quateron Reef, and Gaben Reef, but none are large enough to house an airstrip in their current form. So why fight over small rocks in the middle of the ocean? Now we know. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Gollas, for very uh, 